Hachiko. It was a late December morning. Few people were making their way to the Shibuya train station through the icy wind. I was helping my grandmother set up the newspaper stall for the day. As I was laying out colorful magazines on a stand outside the stall, a golden brown animal whizzed past me. It is a wolf! I screamed and dashed behind the magazine stand. No, Rei-chan, he's just an Akita puppy, said Dr. Ueno, rushing down the pavement to calm me. Konnichiwa, Dr. Ueno, greeted my grandmother as she stepped out of the newspaper stall and reached out to hold my hand comfortingly. How are you, Mrs. Daisuke? Dr. Ueno said, bowing respectfully. Rei-chan, I hope you had a good holiday in your village, he said, turning to me. I nodded. Still crouching. I'm sorry Hachiko scared you. Come, meet him. Dr. Ueno smiled encouragingly. Dr. Ueno was a professor at the Tokyo Imperial University. He often bought magazines from us. My grandmother had known him for years. I realized he had got himself a pet dog when I was away on my school holidays to visit my parents. Good morning, Dr. Ueno, I said as I walked up to him slowly. I bent forward and carefully extended my fist to Hachiko in friendship. He licked it quickly and wagged his tail back and forth till his whole body shook. We laughed to see him so happy. See you soon, said Dr. Ueno as he waved to the three of us and entered the station. He shut the train station's door behind him to keep the cold draft out. As each of the passengers walked in and out of the station, they carefully shut the door behind them to keep away the cold. Hachiko looked on longingly towards the door for some time and then turned to walk home. I followed Hachiko from a safe distance. When he ran into Dr. Ueno's garden, I waved to him to say goodbye and rushed to my school. In the evening, I returned to our stall to help my grandmother pack the unsold magazines and newspapers. I saw Hachiko waiting near our stall, looking eagerly at the door to the Shibuya station. I petted him. He gobbled the little piece of surume I gave him from my snack box. As I kneeled down to play with him, he wagged his tail and whimpered joyfully. He rolled over and allowed me to rub his belly. Through his play, however, Hachiko often paused to look at the station's door. With his small eyes, erect ears, and large curled tail held over his body. He would stand in attention to check if Dr. Ueno was back. When Dr. Ueno walked out of the door waving to Hachiko, he yelped and shook with joy to see the professor. As soon as Dr. Ueno stepped onto the pavement, he jumped up, placing his forepaws on the professor's thighs. Dr. Ueno hugged his pet eagerly as he nodded to me. He spoke loving words to Hachiko as they made their way home. Little did I know that I was going to see this lovely reunion every day for many, many months. Hachiko came every day to see off and receive Dr. Ueno. I had developed a deep friendship with Hachiko. In fact, many regular passengers at the Shibuya station were friends with Hachiko. They admired the dog's love for Dr. Ueno. The evening of 21st May, 1925, however, was different. Hachiko somehow was not interested in our usual games. 
When the time for Dr. Ueno's return got closer, Hachiko stood up alertly, staring at the door. The door opened and shut several times that evening as people walked in and out of the station. But Dr. Ueno did not walk out. I knelt beside Hachiko, hugging him as we waited together. A light drizzle started as it began to get dark. Ray chan it's time to go home, said my grandmother, lowering the shutters of our newspaper stall. But, Sobo, Dr. Ueno is not back from his work yet, I said worriedly, as I let my arm sink into Hachiko's warm coat. He's probably held up with work, Ray chan she said as she shivered a little in the late evening breeze and rain. I could not let my old grandmother walk alone the long distance to our home. As we walked home, we hoped Dr. Ueno would return soon. I thought of Hachiko's eager face often that night. Next day in the morning, I found Hachiko sitting where I had left him the previous night. Sobo, looks like Hachiko hasn't gone home at all, I told my grandmother and ran ahead to hug Hachiko. He wagged his tail weakly. His coat was wet. His pleading eyes looked from me to the station door. Sobo poured out some warm milk from her flask and offered it to Hachiko. He licked it gratefully. Thank you, Mrs. Daisuke, said an elderly man as he walked up to us from where he had been waiting. I'm Mr. Kobayashi, Dr. Ueno's gardener. The professor has often spoken to me about you and your lovely granddaughter. I'm sorry to say, Dr. Ueno passed away suddenly at work yesterday. Sobo and I were shocked to hear this news. I've been trying to take Hachiko home since midnight, he said softly. We helped Mr. Koboyashi take Hachiko home. But in the evening, Hachiko was back, his brown eyes intently fixed at the station's entrance door. He licked my palm and accepted the sirume, but he did not roll over or jump any more. Through rain or snow, Hachiko always waited at the edge of the pavement near our newspaper stall for Dr. Ueno. He waited every evening till the last train pulled out of the station. Then he would walk away slowly into the night. He waited this way till his last breath, almost ten years later. At the busy Shibuya station, to this day, you can see the bronze statue of Hachiko, eagerly waiting for Dr. Ueno. The place near the statue is a happy meeting point for families and friends, just as Hachiko would have liked.